Hi, in the last video I showed you how to read a receiver signal. Part of that code is shown right here. What I defined was pin 2 as an input pin where the signal will come from the receiver. I started a serial communication so the data could be transferred over to the computer. And then I had a loop where a variable would be assigned the high time of pin 2 and after that that variable will be printed in the serial window. Unfortunately this is not the best way to read the signal. This code here is known as a halting code. To understand more about this let's consider the following situation. Here I'll explain how a loop system works. Let's imagine we have a person a person is currently busy watching a television. However, the person is also waiting for a parcel. So the person has to keep an eye out for the mailman. At the same time, the person has also got something in the oven that needs to make sure it doesn't burn. So what a person does, it keeps cycling around between the system. It goes to the TV then to the front door, then to the kitchen and back to the TV. That's how a loop system works. Now as you can imagine, this system is very slow. A lot of energy is wasted in going from one place to the other. Hence, it is not a very good system. Now let's consider an interrupt based system. Here we have the same situation. A person is busy watching a TV. However, there is nothing else currently happening in the situation. What we have is an interrupt. We can consider the interrupt as the ringing of the bell. As soon as the bell rings, the person stops watching the TV, goes to the main door, collects the parcel and goes back to watching the TV. And after that, he does not need to worry about the main door. Now let's imagine the timer on his oven starts ringing. The person stops watching the TV, goes to check the oven, takes the food out and then goes back to watching the TV and suddenly we have no more interrupt happening. Now using this system we can get much faster work done the work is also more efficient since the person is making the least amount of effort and hence it is a much better system. The same can be applied for a microcontroller. A microcontroller does not need to halt a code for it to detect an input and this is where we will use an interrupt. In the language of microcontrollers what we will use is something called a pin change interrupt. When working with interrupts, the first thing we see is pin change interrupt control register. Its job is to remember if interrupts are enabled and it is also responsible for stopping the code that is currently running and executing a special code made for that interrupt. Then we look at mask registers. They are responsible for remembering which pens cause an interrupt and they are also responsible for monitoring that pen. In a given microcontroller, there can be more than one mask registers. Here we will look at four different pins. First, there is interrupt 0. This pin corresponds to digital pin 53 on mega board and pin number 8 on uno board. And we have interrupt 1, interrupt 2 and interrupt 3. These are the four pins that we will use in our code. More information about the interrupts can be found in chapter 15 of the microcontroller datasheet. You can find out which interrupt corresponds to which pin using the pinout diagram. This here is for the mega board and this here is for the Arduino Uno board. I will add the links to all three of these documents in the description. To use an interrupt, we first need to enable pin change interrupt control register. 
we do that by writing pin change interrupt control register space bitwise or equal to open bracket one space bit shift left space pin change interrupt enable zero bracket close close line this first line here will tell the pin change interrupt register that this code now contains an interrupt we now need to define which pin on the physical board would cause an interrupt to do that we will need to tell the mask register which pin will cause an interrupt we can do that by writing pin change mask register number zero equal to bitwise or equal to open bracket one bit shift left space pin change interrupt zero now this line will tell the mask register that pin change interrupt zero pin will now cause an interrupt this stands for pin 53 on the mega board and pin 8 on the uno board to do this for multiple pins we can simply copy this line and paste it just below since we're going to be using with four different pins we need to add the relative address since we know our second pin has pin change interrupt one address and then two and then three so what we have done is we have enabled the interrupts in the interrupt register interrupt control register and then we have told the mask register that pin int 0 1 2 and 3 will cause an interrupt when an interrupt occurs we need to run a special code and we tell the microcontroller which code to run using the interrupt vector you can set that up by writing ISR open bracket PCINT 0 0 underscore VECT. This is a vector that points that whenever the pins mentioned above PC int 0 or 1 or 2 and 3, whenever there's an occur of interrupt on any of these pins this code here will be launched 